It is an honor for me today to have my, a lot of my family here with me. And we are going to be dedicating one of them to the Lord today. And it is an honor for me to dedicate my great-grandson uh, to the Lord today. And uh, we're fortunate we have four generations here uh, with him. And all four of those generations will have an opportunity to pray over him. So we appreciate all that uh, God is doing and blessing us with. We thank him so much for that today. The Bible is very clear about children. And God expects us to uh, have great care and great concern when it comes to children and when raising children. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy that when we are to teach our children diligently the things of Scripture, we're to pour those into them at all times of our life. The Bible tells us when we go by the wayside, when we sit in our homes, when we get up in the morning and when we lay down at night, in all of those venues, the Bible instructs us on how to teach our children. It tells us to teach them diligently the ways of the Lord. We want to change society, and we've invited the government to change society for us with us taking our hands off and saying, you know best, you dictate to us all the things that we need to do, and life will be wonderful. My question is, is that working? And my response to that is, no, it's not. The, the care for the nation begins in the home. A nation can be only as strong as the families that, that make up that nation. And what we do in the home with our children when they are growing up plays a tremendous, tremendous part in what's going on on planet Earth and in our society and in our communities and in our home and in our neighborhoods. So I want to challenge you today that as you have children and are raising children, those of you that are, I want to challenge you to pour into them the things of God. Don't wait and say, as some say, I want to let my children grow up and let them make a decision. Would you let your child decide at six years old to drive a car? Would you let them at eight, in the eighth grade decide, I'm quitting school? No, you wouldn't do that. You would really not do that. But we will let them choose the most important things in their life. Knowing that we're dealing with a fallen nature within them, it is not a good idea to let, them, to let them decide. The Bible tells us, in fact, that we are not to let them decide on their own. We are to pour into them and to instruct them and to teach them. The Scripture says, train a child in the way he is to go, and when he is old, he will not depart from that. That is a powerful Scripture that if you pour into your children, they may get away for a while, but at some point they're going to come back. Yesterday, I talked with a man. He's 83 years old. He came to my home, and he was sitting out in my uh, driveway, and we were talking. And he told me, when I was 11 years old, my mother took me to church, and I accepted the Lord as my Savior. And I've been away from God all of my life, but I want to come back home. At 83 years old, he had gotten away when he was a young man in his driving race cars and doing all of those things. But at an old man, because that scripture is true, train a child in the way they will go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. And when he got old in his old, old age, here he is saying, I want to come back to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he sat in my driveway yesterday with tears in his eyes. I want to come back to the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I remember when I was a little boy going to church with my mother. Because those scriptures are powerful. So today we're going to dedicate this child to the Lord. And we're going to ask God's blessings and grace. And when we do that as a church family, those of you that are members of this congregation and come here every Sunday, when we do that, what we are saying is we're saying this as a church. We will be a part of pouring into this child. Some will teach Sunday school. Some will be their youth pastor. Some will be influences in his life. And as we do that, we want to be careful of the example that we're setting for children. God is watching us and he holds us accountable. The Bible tells us that we will be accountable for the things that we do, even the words that we say. So God is going to hold us accountable for what we do and for what we do not do. 
And so I challenge you, especially those of you that are raising children, pour into them the good and righteous and holy things. Begin to speak life into them. Begin to speak wholeness into them. Begin to pour the scripture into them so that when they get old and older, they will understand how to live and how to govern and how to do with their lives and how to treat others, how to be a good companion when they marry, how to be a good friend, a good employee. All of that is contained in the, in the covers of Scripture. And all of those things, parents are instructed to pour into their children. We're to teach them. We, just, we can't just take them to church and say, here they are for an hour. Give them everything they're going to need. Pour into them everything. Wouldn't that be wonderful? It don't work like that. But from the time they're born, from the music they listen to when they're little, to the cartoons they watch, from everything in between, God has given me a responsibility to pour into them righteousness and wholeness and goodness and integrity. I'm to teach them how to be a good employee, to be a good companion by the example that I set. They need to see me get up in the morning and go to work as the head of the home. They need to see their father come alongside them and, and lead the family in prayer and help to make decisions and be the one that when punishment is necessary... Oh, yes, punishment is a part of raising children. And not always time out. Sometimes it's time with a belt. I know I shouldn't say that in church today, but that's true. The Scripture said if you spare the rod, you'll spoil the child. That doesn't mean beat them, but it does mean spank them when they need it. It's a part of life. I was ornery growing up, I'll be honest with you. I needed a lot of spankings, and thank God I got quite a few. I got quite a few going up in the home, and when I started school, even the teachers decided I needed a little more, so they helped me too. I know we don't do that today, but when I was going to school, they helped you. <laughs> we didn't have attention deficit disorder. They had a board about this long on the desk that solved that problem for us. All the teacher had to do was raise that, and let me tell you, misbehavior went out the door. I don't care what you had, when they raised that board, <laughs> it was corrected immediately. So today, we're going to dedicate a child, and we're going to ask God's favor and God's blessings and God's grace on him. So if the parents and those assisting me would come forward at this time, parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, we got the whole enchilada here today. Where's the flowers? All of those assisting and all of those participating, if you're a family member and you want to be a part of this, you'll have to hold those. I ask all the families to come when I dedicate a child because I want, to see, I want you to see the significance of all of those that have responsibility in your sons and daughters. First and foremost is mom and dad. All others are subordinate to mom and dad. Grandparents and all the others are subordinate to mom and dad. Mom and dad have that instruction and they begin to pour into the child's life. Hey there, buddy. How are you today? Yes, he's looking fine. Would you bow your heads with me as we pray before we begin the dedication? Father, we thank you today for your great grace and your great mercy and all that you give us to do. Father, I am so thankful to be alive this day and to have an opportunity to share in my family's life. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to be a teacher and an instructor, to be an example. Lord, I thank you that I get to be a, a sweet and kind grandpa and that I get to pour into their lives and to love on them and to teach them the right way. And Father, for all of these family members that are gathered here today, all of these that will have influence in this child's life, this child will be looking at them and seeing their example. And Father, I pray that all of us would be mindful of our behavior, how we speak and how we act and how we treat others in their presence. And Father, I ask that you help us to love you with everything that is within us. And God, will be careful to honor you for that today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now the red flowers. Red flowers. 
To you, the Father, I give this red flower as a symbol of the rich red blood in which you build and defend the home into which this little one has come. May it be a home built firmly upon the ideals of Christ. I charge you today that you let nothing enter your home that will injure the soul of this child or crowd out Christ. To you, the mother, I give this white flower as a symbol of the purity of heart and purpose with which you have endowed the home into which this little one has come. If your child grows up to know God as a personal experience, it will be largely because you have awakened the child's faith into its first consciousness of God. And because you have nurtured in the, it in the things of God, it is from you the greatest object of the child's affection that the child gets his first idea of who God is. From the purity of your eyes comes the idea that God is holy, and from the gentleness of your voice, the idea that God is love. And to you, author, I give this pink flower to indicate the blending of love from mother and father, also as a token of your innocence and purity of soul in the sight of God. My earnest prayer for you is that when you lose your innocency and your eyes of understanding are open, you will see Christ and make Him your Savior. Now we're going to go through the act of dedicating and laying our hands on this child and presenting him to the Lord and asking God to pour his blessings and favor into him. And we're going to begin with a father asking. Grandpa's going to bless him now. Okay, I'll hold him while you read. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to need that. It's okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. For, for this precious child, we are so grateful for the blessings of Arthur. <clears throat> uh, through, also, you have entrusted him to our family. I know he, is, he belongs to you. Like Hannah offered Samuel, I dedicate Arthur to you. Lord, I recognize that he is always in your care. I gave I give you complete authority over his life. Lord, I pray that Arthur will receive you as a as his savior at a early life, early age. Please within his heart, place within his heart a desire to follow you all the days of his life. Keeping him walking on the path that leads to eternal life. Help him to overcome the temptations in this world. And the sins that would so easily entangle him, if it is your will for him to be married, I ask that you would set apart for him a wife and that they would keep themselves pure until their wedding night. I pray that his life would bring glory to you. Dear God, send our Senior Holy Spirit daily to lead and guide Arthur, ever assist him to grow in wis wisdom and stature in grace, knowledge, and kindness, compassion, and love. 
May he serve you faithfully with his whole heart, devoted to you. My, may he discover the joy of your presence through a daily relationship with you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, I lay my hands on my great-grandson today, and I ask you to pour into his life grace and peace and joy. Father, I pray that you would bless him with prosperity and love and hope and peace. Father God, I pray that you would bless him with things pertaining to God. Yeah. Lord, that he would be an easy study, and at a young age he would have a desire to serve you. Father, I ask that you would touch his life and minister to him and strengthen him. God, I pray today that you would pour into him your Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit would lead him all the days of his life. Yeah. And Father God, I pray for his father and for his mother. I pray for them as they instruct this child in wisdom and in grace. I pray that you would give them wisdom and grace. Help them to understand what it means to have a child and what it means to raise a child. Father, I pray that they would look to Scripture. And they would begin to pour scripture into this child's life. Father, I pray that they would give him every opportunity of home and of church. And Lord, I pray that they would just be a blessing to him. And God, I ask you to lay your hand on Arthur and to touch him and to strengthen him with grace. Lord, let him love you, let him serve you, and let him honor you all the days of his life. We do here and now dedicate him to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, there's it's on. There's five generations of us here, and uh, I was thinking as uh, Pastor Frank was praying that um, the many times that I sat in, in church service and listened to my dad um, pray over children, dedicate them, and one of his prayers was that his children would serve the Lord. And in all five of these generations, four of these generations, the fifth one's a little too young yet. <laughs> but all four of these generations, there's been a, a string of ministers, of uh, gospel singers, gospel musicians. And uh, we thank the Lord for this. And in this dedication prayer, we want to pray that Arthur will continue that, uh, that service to the Lord. Amen. So it's my privilege uh, to do this, I'm the great, great grandpa. His dad is little James, <laughs> <laughs> which I've called him for a long time. Told him this morning, I guess we're going to have to change that a little bit. But uh, <clears throat> my blessing today is taken from Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. And there's one thing my parents taught us was the Word of God. And when anything else seems to go wrong in your life, the Word will, will hold you. One of the earliest scriptures that I learned from my parents was, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. <laughs> we all learned that one. <laughs> and if James and Carissa would teach Arthur that, uh, from the very beginning, they'll, Arthur will learn to respect the position of mother and father in the home and, uh, and his responsibility to honor them as parents in the Lord. And uh, so I, my prayer is that the family will, uh, will read this, uh, this blessing uh, to Arthur through his life and that it would become a part of him and a part of his life. <clears throat> Arthur James Ells, obey the Lord your God and all these blessings will be yours. The Lord will bless your towns and your fields. The Lord will bless you with many children, with abundant crops, and with many cattle and sheep. The Lord will bless your grain crops and the food you prepare from them. The Lord will bless everything you do. 
The Lord will defeat your enemies when they attack you. They will attack from one direction, but they will run from you in all directions. The Lord your God will bless your work and fill your barns with grain. He will bless you in the land that he is giving you. If you obey the Lord your God and do everything he commands, he will make this word come to pass as he has promised. Deuteronomy 28, 2 to 9. And I, all I could say to add to this is amen, let it be so. Amen. Can I have my beard back? <laughs> Ouch. Okay, okay, okay. Well, the church family today. Would you extend your right hand? And let us pray for this child and this family. Father, we thank you today thank you. for all that you mean to us. And we ask your very best blessings to be upon this family. To all this extended family and all of those that will have a part in his life. We pray for them today. We ask your blessings to flow down upon them. To touch them and to strengthen them. To give them wisdom. And Father, as a church, we ask that we would be able to be a blessing in this child's life. And Father, I look forward to seeing him grow up to graduate from school, to play football, and to whatever in life he encounters to do. I want to enjoy that. I pray, Father, that I will be a part of his experience with you, and that he will love you and honor you. And Father, I ask you for this church family that we will pour into this child's life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.